So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad to be here. I was here last year, so many things have changed. And you pointed out two anniversaries, about 100 years. So you know that Vienna is the capital of music. We are celebrating 150th year of the most famous waltz you know, the Blue Danube. So that's Vienna. So welcome uh, in Vienna. If you look just 12 months back, you will see that many things have changed and some new challenges appeared as new ones. Look at the problem of Brexit and the discussion about the Brexit in the last days. So there is uh, probably something like a hard Brexit which will not good for the United Kingdom and not good for the European Union. The question we have to be answered is for whom it is worse than for Great Britain or for the, for the Union. So I think for both. And that's one of the problems. Look at the crisis we have on the currency with Turkish lira, with uh, Russian currency. Look at the conflicts, the new ones. And uh, look also on the situation you mentioned it in the United States. So in my opinion, we are probably running in a period of uncertainty. And uh, some special problems uh, don't want to mention again, but it's necessary to do. That's the big problem we have not solved, that's the refugee crisis. And that's also uncertainty, not only for the people, it's also uncertainty for the regions and it's uncertainty also for the budgetary situation of the different countries. We have very much new economic uh, challenges which are accompanied by a high degree of political uncertainty and we do not know which consequences will arise out of them, neither in political nor in economic terms. At lunchtime, I will have a panel discussion about more or less Europe. So you can mention that this discussion will bring us to a discussion about what is the right way for the European Union to be managed. And that's a discussion we have not only in the political, but also in the economic way. Look at special countries in uh, Europe like Italy. I will mention the problem of non-performing loans in uh, the world, especially in Europe, and you will see that we have to solve so many problems. What is the conclusion out of this? The European Union has so many unfinished businesses. And uh, what is the way to finish them? That will be the question for the year 2017. If you look at the discussion about Brexit and this fact of uncertainty, uh, there are clear positions by the European Union. If uh, the United Kingdom will not accept the four freedoms, especially the freedom of movement, there will be no associated contract with the European Union possible. So that's the way why probably the minister in Great Britain, that's the finance minister and also the prime minister, discuss about this hard Brexit. But what does this mean, a hard Brexit, for the financial businesses? What does uh, we expect, uh, what will change in this? So many questions will be raised. One of them, will Europe as a whole lose influence in the worldwide financial industry? Will there be a simple reallocation of activities into other EU countries? Will we give them a passporting for the European Union? Will it have influence on the daily business of financial players in Europe? I think we should avoid that creation of a financial centre outside the harmonised European rulebook, which might provide financial products circumventing agreed standards. We must also ask ourselves the question of the consequences of a successful exit. Let me just uh, point out there is a big discussion in between the European Union about the way of the exit. Nobody knows how it, it exactly will happen. Uh, it's not clear what means the Article 50. And it's not clear, is it possible to negotiate in parallel the exit and the new contract or not in parallel? So if you think about that, only the exit will need about two years. In my opinion, we need five years. And can we do what we can do in parallel to make clear how is the cooperation with the United Kingdom after exit? 
So, uh, in this question, we have also to discuss what must also, we, we must also ask ourselves uh, the question of the consequences. Will it lead to a stronger integration in the European Union, becoming a stronger European family, or will it lead to more pronounced national policies where we stop considering spillover effects on the others? We call it this domino effect. Probably it will happen if we cannot find a solution for this exit. It's hard to predict the outcome of this time, and much will be influenced by the readiness to look for common solutions and by the readiness to take serious the fear and problems by the citizens. These fear are caused, among other, by, by migration, terrorism, but also by a lack of economic recovery. Unfortunately, easy answers do not exist. Another high level is uncertainty, as I mentioned before, from the results of the U.S. election. If you heard about Mr. Trump yesterday, I think all the international agreements and contracts will not be existing after his uh, uh, election. It's uh, about GATT, it's about uh, WTO. Uh, and he said, that's America, let's make America great again. Okay, but what does it mean for the European community? And what does it mean for the economy? As you heard yesterday, he is planning some new uh, customs for, for uh, German producers of cars, uh, if they are producing in Mexico. Uh, what for a world we have to, to see after starting his government and his uh, consultant he has elected? Signs of new phases of expansionary budgetary policies have lifted optimism and hope to quick economic recovery, but signs of protectionism and uh, unwillingness to cooperate at international level has cast a cloud over the international dialogues. In some ways, we might soon get a first answer when the Basel Committee of Banking Supervisory finalizes negotiations on Basel III Plus or whatever it is, uh, uh, whatever it, they will call it. We might also be at a crossroad with respect to the supervisory framework. And here I don't uh, allude at the European Banking Union, which is a huge impact for the competence uh, distribution between European and national level, and which will still needs to be finalized. I would like to refer to small remarks on systematic, uh, systematic changes in supervisory, which can be heard here and there. It much, uh, it's much uh, too early to give them too much weight, but uh, they are nevertheless remarkable. Much has to do with the issue of proportionality and uh, the objective to reduce the regulatory burden for small entities. You can do this either by introducing special exemptions for, or you can follow a radical approach where you can create a separate set of rules for smaller institutions with a low risk profile. I do not want to discuss these uh, pros and cons of these two approaches now in the opening statement. You can spend the whole day on this issue. Uh, but I have the feeling that we might have intensive discussion about the future. But no matter which approach might be followed, the financial stability, stability must never be put at risk. Before handing over to my governor, uh, uh, Novotny, I would like to touch briefly one of the numerous challenges of the financial sector, which is a kind of leftover from the financial crisis and also caused by structural rigidities. The crisis and the slow recovery have left a number of countries with high non-performing loans. And these non-performing ratios and debt overhangs are a big problem. Look at uh, a country like Italy. They are probably uh, install a bad bank with a volume of non-performing loans from 360 billion euros. How you can manage this? That's only one country. If you uh, look at the uh, complete volume of the NPLs in the banking system represents over 1 trillion euros. This is an incredible amount which drags on bank profitability. And let me say again what is my opinion to the situation of the banks. I will uh, make clear that we have no crisis of the banks. We have crisis of the profitability of the banks to make them resistant against the next shocks. 
So we have to do everything to make them more profitable. That's one of the reasons why the ECB and Governor Novotny are working hard on the reconstruction of the banking sector and make them more profitable. profitable. And uh, they are in a good dialogue with all the international institutions like the IMF in this case. The current low profitability banks to experiences uh, make it difficult for them to clean their balance sheets and get rid of all the NPLs which the other way around influence their business activities and hamper further investments and growth. Also high NPL ratios are only concentrated in some countries. There might be spillovers to other European countries as direct effect via the trader of the financial channel. So we need re resolute and multifaceted efforts to address the NPL problem in Europe and to stop the circles between economic growth and high NPLs. A self-solving solution without consistent policies is not an option. And I think uh, I will not be uh, a surprise for you if I tell you in my capacity as finance minister, the huge rescue packages financed by taxpayers are absolutely not a solution either. So we have had some big problems with Austrian banks. We are just winding down one that's called the Heta Froema Hypo Alpe Adria Bank. So we have find a solution. It's a hard way to do it, but it's uh, the first example in the European Union where we use uh, the ERD, uh, the, the ERD directive to wind down such a big bank. The volume we have to buy back is 11 billion euros, so that's a lot of money. But you cannot always uh, make clear that the taxpayers have to pay for it. But uh, this has to be accompanied by improvements in predictable and efficiency of insolvency, foreclosure, and judicial framework to raise the value extracts from NPLs. A second step has to be an increase of supervisory acceptations towards bank NPL management and the development of measures to minimize the risk of new NPLs arising in the future. So there's a quite a lot to do in various fields to solve a problem which is waning too heavily in the European economy. And finally, I have take a quick glance to the European Union agenda. A lot of work is also waiting for us to finalize the capital markets union and improve the regulatory framework in making it more efficient. Many of these issues will be discussed on this conference. Thank you for choosing Vienna. I wish you a good conference with many good ideas and take the best memories at home if you leave Vienna. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.